Montessori, Her Life and Work. Part 1, Chapter 1, and what you're getting. Section 12, Dr. Montessori as a University Lecturer. Anna Macaroni gives an interesting account of her impressions when she first heard Montessori lecture on this subject at a course for teachers at the University of Rome in 1906. The hall was crowded with young people of both sexes. The lecturer remained standing during her discourse and kept her eyes fixed on her audience with a penetrating look. I found out afterwards that, even with quite a large audience, she was able to somehow be conscious of each one individually with what one might describe as a kind of spiritual contact. I noticed at once that she was a very good-looking woman, but what impressed me more was that she did not follow the fashion of so many learned women of that time by dressing in a somewhat masculine style. Her attire, though simple, retained an elegant and feminine touch. In that opening lecture, she spoke not so much about anthropology as about schools. What the function of a school should be, she emphasized two main points. First, that it is the duty of the teacher to help rather than to judge. And second, that true mental work does not exhaust, but rather gives nourishment, food for the spirit. She was a most attractive lecturer with a manner that was easy and gracious. Everything that she said had the warmth of life. I remember some of the students saying, her lectures make us want to be good, which recalls the remark made by another teacher at another of her courses a year or two later. We do not understand all that she is trying to teach us, but we all find in it a spiritual stimulus. In addition to her work as a lecturer in the University of Rome and the Women's Training College, she also practiced in the clinics and hospitals in Rome, and, though it seems hard to believe it, even carried on a private practice of her own as well, for at least part of this period. Her patients, whether in hospital or in their homes, were never for her just cases. For combined with her knowledge and skill, there was always the personal interest. The following anecdote, related but to the author by a lady who was then living in Rome, is revealing. One day, Dr. Montessori was called in to attend two small babies, twins, who were so near death's door that their father had said, Why trouble to get a doctor? They are already dead. The parents were very poor and unable to afford either household help or nursing. On her arrival, the young lady doctor took in the whole situation at a glance. Taking off her coat, she lit the fire, sent the mother to bed, heated some water, bathed the two babies, holding them in a special way, prepared their food, and thus little by little, hour by hour, brought them back to life. Servant, cook, nurse, and doctor in one. Years later, when this same mother with her children met this Dottoresa in the street, she would push them towards her, saying, Go and salute that lady, my dear. She is your real mother, not I. She gave you your life. A pretty compliment and well-deserved. If this was typical of Dr. Montessori's way of treating her indigent private patients, and from other sources one gathers it was, it was certainly a good thing for her that she was not dependent for her livelihood on her private practice. Happily, as we have seen, she had other irons in the fire, such as her appointment at the psychiatric clinic, her lectureship at the training college, and later, her professorship in anthropology at the university. But the time was coming, and coming quite soon, though as yet she did not know it, when she would abandon her private practice, resign all her lectureships, and set forth like Columbus across unknown and uncharted seas to discover a new world. Reader's Notes I gotta say, I think this is why most people long for the days of house calls, because that was very beautiful. And it can't be easy to burn so many candles at so many ends. <laughs> well, I must have had an entire candelabra. <laughs> but I'm impressed. That's something we forget. Great people have many things in common that are amazing, but one of them... It is not easy to learn to do that many things, as well as still be present in the moment, and who you truly are. That takes a lot of hard work and planning.